Hello everyone and welcome to this course. In this course we are going to build a stunning document scanning application in Flutter. So in that application user will be able to recognize text in documents using the powerful OCR models. Similarly he can extract entities or useful information in business cards or other documents using the entity extraction models. And finally, he can enhance document images in Flutter by applying different techniques. So, after completing this course, you will be able to perform text recognition and entity extraction in Flutter with both images and videos. And you will be able to apply different image enhancement techniques on document images to improve their visibility. Apart from that, you will be able to build machine learning powered smart applications in Flutter. So, the complete course is about 4 hours long and it includes all source code that we write in this course. Every section has before and after source code, so you can easily code along with me. Apart from that, you will get a certificate upon completion, which you can add to your resume. And the course comes with a 30 days money back guarantee. So if you are not satisfied, just simply ask for a refund. So if you are a beginner Flutter developer or even an experienced Flutter professional, this course has something for you. So what are you waiting for? Join the course now and start building ML powered smart applications in Flutter. Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to start building our document scanning application in Flutter. So the first step of building this application is creating a new Flutter project. So open your Android Studio and click on this new Flutter project button. After that, make sure that the path of SDK is correct, then click next. And here you need to type your project name. So I will gonna name it as DS which stands for document scanning. But you can also use any name that you like. After that choose the project location and then click create and our new flutter project will be created in just a second. So now our new flutter project is created and it contains the default counter application. So I am going to install this application inside an iOS simulator so that we can see that counter application and after that we are going to start building our document scanning application. So here from this drop down select open iOS simulator and it will gonna launch the simulator for us. And after that I can simply click on this run main dot dot button and the application will be installed inside this simulator. So now our application is installed inside the simulator and you can see this counter application here. And upon clicking on this plus button the count will gonna increase. And the code of this counter application is present inside this starter project. But now we are going to make changes inside this code because we want to build our document scanning application. And the first part of building that application is building the GUI for our application. So if you have seen the demo of the application then you know that our application home screen looks like this. And here in the middle we are going to display the live camera footage. And this rectangle is visible on that live camera footage. And then in the bottom we got this box which contain these three icons. And here upon clicking on the middle icon user can capture the image. And after that we are going to scan, recognize or enhance that image. And similarly, if user don't want to capture the image but he want to choose image from gallery and want to recognize text, scan document or enhance it, then he will gonna click on this image icon and we are going to show him the images of gallery from which he can choose an image. And if user want to change the camera direction then he can click on this icon and we are going to toggle the camera. And it means that user can switch between front camera and the back camera upon clicking on this button. And after covering the bottom part at the top we got another box which contain three options.
So here user can select the functionality which he want to perform. Like if he want to detect or recognize the tags present in the document, then he can select this recognize option and after that he can choose or capture the image. And once he will gonna do that, we are going to recognize all the tags present in that image and show it to the user. But if user don't want to just recognize the text but he want to scan the document which means that he want to get only the useful information like if he want to scan a business card or some other card then he can select this scan option and after that he can choose or capture the image and then we are going to show only useful information to the user. And if he want to enhance the document image then he can select the enhance option. So this is the home screen of our application which we are going to build and this is the basic GUI. So now inside our application we are firstly going to build the GUI for the home screen and then we are going to add the functionality one by one. So let's start. So inside our project which we created we got the code for this counter application but we don't need that code. So here what you can do is to minimize this my home page and then you can also minimize this my home page state and after that you can remove both of these classes. And after that we are going to create a new stateful widget or a new home page for our application. And to do that inside your project click on this drop down and select project. Because here right now the android option is selected so we cannot view the flutter project. So here select project and you can see all the files and after that expand this lib folder and then right click on it or press command click then go to new and create a new dot file and we are going to name it home screen because it will be the home screen for our document application and after that press enter and our new dot file is created and after creating it we are going to add the code inside it so we are going to add a stateful widget inside this home screen so here type stf and you will see an option for stateful widget so you can see create new stateful widget so just select it and it will gonna add this code automatically and here you can type the name for this screen or this stateful widget so I will gonna name it as home screen and it has put home screen here and also here and after creating this home screen we are going to add the import so click on this stateful widget and press alt plus enter and you will see this option for importing this first library so just import it and the errors are gone. So here at this point inside our application we have created a new screen and we have added a stateful widget inside that screen. And now inside our main dot dot we are going to replace this my home page with that home screen. So you can simply remove this line and then type home screen because this is the new stateful widget which we created. And after that add parentheses and that's it. So now at this point if you are going to click on this run main dot dot you will gonna notice that our application will gonna turn into this and the reason is now inside our application we are displaying this home screen and in the build method or in the GUI of this home screen we are displaying this placeholder and this is the graphical representation of this placeholder. So now we are going to make changes inside this build method and whatever widget or view which we are going to put inside this build method it will be visible here. So we are going to start by adding a container inside this build method and after that press command s and our application will be hot reloaded and there you can see once I did that the lines are gone because now inside our application we are showing this container and now you can set the background color for this container so select the color property and select the color to white. And here once you will do that you might have to import the library for color as well. So click on colors and then import this material dot dot and that's it. And after doing that press command s again and now you can see our screen turns white. So now in the GUI of our home screen we got this container with white background. And now we are going to start building the GUI for our home screen. And now we are going to start building the GUI for our application. 
So as you can see in this screenshot, our home screen looks like this. And here firstly, we got this top box which contains these three icons. And then the middle part contains the live camera footage. And then the bottom box which contains these three icons. So now we are going to start by adding this bottom box. And to do that, we are going to add a child for our container. So the child of our container will be a column widget and in that column widget we are going to place multiple widgets. So select column here and then inside parenthesis set the children's list. So now inside this children's list we are going to specify or add multiple widgets. And while we are building the GUI of our application it's important to format the code so that things will gonna look better. So click on any widget and press control click and you will see this option reformat code with dot format. So just select it and it will gonna improve the spacing there you can see that. So now inside our column widget to create that box we are going to add a card widget and then inside that card widget we are going to set the child property and the child of that card widget will be a container and using that container we are going to set the height for that bottom box. So inside this container we are going to set the height property and for now we are going to set it to 100. And after that you can set the color for this card and you can choose the colors dot blue accent. So you can see this option so just select it and after that press command S. And once you will do that, you can see a blue box is added inside of a GUI. But you can notice that it is at the top because right now we did not edit the other portions of our GUI. And to tackle it, for now you can set the padding for our container widget and to set it here at padding and then choose this edge inserts dot only. And inside it you can specify the padding for left, top, right and bottom. So we are going to set the padding for top and set it to 40 for now. And then press command S. And now you can see our container move down a little. So here let's increase it to 50 for now and then press command S again. And now you can see we can clearly see this container. And now inside this container or inside this card widget we are going to add those icons. And to add those icons inside this container we are going to add a row widget. So inside a column widget we can place multiple widgets above one another. And inside a row widget we can place multiple views horizontally or to the left or to the right of each other. So inside this container we are going to set the child property and then we are going to add a row inside it. And for this row we are going to set the children's list again. And after that let's format the code so that we can see things clearly. And now inside this row we are going to add those icons. So firstly we are going to add an icon for capturing the image. And to add the icon we are going to use this icon widget and inside it we can select the icon using this icons class. So icons dot camera and you will see this icon here and it's up to you that which icon you want to use but I will gonna use this icon and after that press command S. And now you can see this little icon is added. So now let's increase its size. So we are going to set the size property and set it to 50. And after that if you want to change the color then you can set the color property as well. So color equal to colors dot white. And after that press command S. And now you can see our icon is clearly visible. And as we want to make this icon clickable so that later user can click on it and capture the image. So here we are going to enclose this icon inside an inkwell widget. And an inkwell widget provides a method using which we can detect when the user have clicked on this icon. So here click on this icon and press alt enter and you will see this option wrap with widget so just select it. And then type the name of the widget to inkwell. And now you can see our icon is inside this inkwell widget. So let's quickly format the code. And there you can see our icon widget is enclosed inside this inkwell widget. And the inkwell widget provides you a lot of method like here you will add a comma 
and then type own and you will see a lot of options so using this widget you can detect a lot of gestures like you can detect when the user is clicking on a widget long pressing on it double tapping on it and so on so we are only interested in detecting a tab or a click so we will add this own tab method and after that you are going to specify the body for this callback so basically here we have added this own tab method and this method will be executed when the user will gonna click on this icon and that is our ultimate goal that we want to detect that when the user have clicked on this icon and at that point we are going to capture the image and perform the scanning and after adding this method here you can notice a lot of warnings here and the warnings are because of some rules of flutter and the first rule is when we are adding a child to a widget we need to make sure that we are setting the child property to the last like here you can see the card widget contain this child which is this container but inside this card widget we are also setting this color so in flutter we should make sure that we are setting this color first and then the child property later and now to correct it you can simply click on this move child property to the end of argument and it will gonna auto correct it similarly after that you can see this warning for icon so when you will move the cursor you will see this option add const modifier so just click on it and it will gonna add a const keyword here and the warning is gone so basically this const keyword is used in flutter to specify that this particular widget will not gonna change during our application like inside our application this icon widget will not gonna change so we have made it constant and it will also going to improve the performance of our application because now our application knows which widget is constant and it will gonna save a lot of time so adding this const keyword improve the performance of our application so now at this point if you are going to press command s you will not gonna notice any change in the GUI because at this point inside this row widget we have just added a single icon but now we are going to add the other two icons as well so here you can copy this inkwell widget and then add a comma and after that paste the inkwell widget again and then add a comma again and after that paste the code again one more time and after doing it press command s and now you can see we got three icons here because we have replicated the code and now we want to display them at an equal distance from one another and to do that inside our row widget we are going to set the property main axis alignment and then type main axis alignment dot and you will see these options so if you want to show all the child in the center then select center here and if you want to position them evenly then select this space evenly so i will gonna select it and then press command s and now you can see all three icons are equally separated and now we are going to change the icons for this one and this one so as this will gonna indicate the toggle camera direction so here we are going to change this icons dot camera with icons dot rotate and you will see a lot of icons here and you can select anyone that you like like i will gonna select this rotate left and after that press command s and now you can see the icon is changed similarly we are going to change this icon as well and we are going to display an image icon so type image here and then select this image outline and after that press command s and this icon is changed as well and now when you will look at the GUI you can notice that the size of side icons is small so here you can change the size for this icon to like 35 and also this one to 35 and then press command s and that's it so now we have created the same bottom box which we got inside this gui the only difference is this box is in the top and this one is in the bottom and we are going to correct its position 
but for now we have created a similar box here which contains three icons and all of these three icons are clickable so it means that when you are going to click on this icon you can notice this small animation and the animation is because of this inkwell widget and upon clicking on it the own tab method is executed and here we can write the code for capturing the image similarly in the own tab method for this inkwell widget we can write the code for opening the gallery so that user can choose the image and so on hello guys hamza here i just want to let you know that this video is just first part of my complete build a document scanning application in flutter course the complete course is about 5 hours long and it includes all source code that we write in this course every section has before and after source code so you can easily code along with me apart from that you will get a certificate upon completion which you can add to your resume and the course comes with a 30 days money back guarantee so if you are not satisfied just simply ask for a refund so if you are interested i will put a link down below and i am offering a discount to first 100 students apart from that you can check our other flutter machine learning courses as well and now let's continue to the next lecture so now after adding this box we are going to add the second box of our home screen so you can see we got this box at the top where user can select the functionality which he want to use like if we want to scan it then he will gonna click on this scan button and if we want to recognize the text then he will gonna click here and for image enhancement he will gonna click here so now we are going to add this box and to do that inside of a gui simply minimize this card widget which is present inside this column widget and after that you can simply copy it and paste it here again so simply paste it and then add a comma and after that press command s and now you can see there are two boxes here and now we are going to make changes in the top box because there we are going to display those options so expand this card widget and here we are simply going to start by setting the height first so let's set the height from 100 to 70 then press command s and now you can see the height is reduced and now we are going to change the icons here so here we are going to firstly display the scan icon so you can remove this rotate left and then add a dot again and then type scan and you will find this scan icon so you can select any one like i will going to select this one and after that we are going to change the middle icon as well with the text recognition so here change this icons dot camera with the scanner and you will see this icon document scanner so simply select it and this icon will be changed as well and finally we are going to change the third icon and here you can display any icon that you like like i will going to add a comma and then i will going to type sharp and it will going to display all the icons which are representing this sharp so i will going to select this assignment sharp and after that press command s and now you can see all of these three icons are changed and now we can also change their size because they are too large at the moment so we can set the size to 25 for all the icons so change it to 25 here here and finally here then press command s and now you can see they are looking better but now below each icon we are also going to add the text as you can see here so what you can do is to click on this icon and then press alt plus enter and here select wrap with column so there you can see the icon is now wrapped with the column and below this icon we are going to add a text widget and in that way firstly the icon will be visible and below that the text will be visible so add a text widget here and then type the text so for this icon we are going to show the text scan here and after that press command s and now you can see we got this scan text but upon enclosing this icon inside this column you can see the position is changed so to set it in the center we are going to set the main axis alignment for this column so here inside our column widget set the property main axis alignment 
and select main axis alignment dot center and it will gonna center all the widgets so press command s and now you can see the position is in the center and after that let's set the color of the text as well so set the style property here and then select text style and using it we can set the color and size of the text so inside this text style simply select the color property and choose the color to white and after that press command s and now you can see the text is turned white and it is looking much better and now we need to do the same for both of these icons so here before doing that let's resolve these warnings so move the cursor anywhere on this warning then select this add const modifier and this warning is gone similarly move here again and you will see this option move child property to the end and now you can see all the warnings are gone and now we need to repeat the same thing for both of these icons so what you can do is to simply minimize this inkwell widget and then paste it below again so below i will gonna paste it one time and then the second time and after that we can remove these inkwell widgets as well and then press command s and now you can see we got three same icons so now in the inkwell widget we are going to change the icon and the text so firstly we are going to use that scanner icon so you can see the icon here so select it and then change the text to recognize after that expand this inkwell widget and here we are going to choose that sharp icon so type sharp and select this assignment sharp and then we are going to show the text enhance and after doing that press command s and now you can see our text and icons are changed so now our bottom box gui is also complete so here we got three buttons using which user can choose the functionality and the only thing left in this home screen is the middle part where we are going to display the live camera footage so now to create the middle part of our home screen we are going to add the widget in between these two card widgets and by that way the middle part will gonna appear between these two widgets and as i told you earlier that we are going to show a dummy portion here for now and later we are going to replace it with the live camera footage and beautiful scanner animation but for now to display a portion here we are going to add a card widget and inside it we are going to add a container and inside this container we are going to set the height for it so here select the height property and we are going to set the height of this container equal to the height of our device minus 300 and to get the height of the device you can use this media query class so media query dot of context and then it will gonna provide you this size object and then inside it you can get the width and the height of screen on which the application is running so we are going to get the height and subtract 300 from it and after that we need to add a comma and now the error is gone and once you will do that on hot reload our application you can notice that there is a view between these two boxes and this is basically this card widget which we just added and now let's set the color for our card widget as well so that we can see it clearly and before doing that let's format our code and now we are going to set the color property for our card widget so above this child we are going to set the color and we are going to choose the colors to black and after that press command s and now you can see this black box in the middle and in future inside this black box we are going to display the live camera footage and beautiful scanner application but for now to make our application look better we have added the card widget here and now after doing this you can set the alignment for the column widget as well in which all these three boxes are present so here you can select main axis alignment and then you can choose that space evenly and it will gonna evenly position them and this bottom space will be removed so press command s and now you can see all these three boxes are positioned evenly 
and if you want to add a margin to the left and to the right or in the bottom then you can simply add it here like here if you want to add a bottom margin then select the bottom property and add the value like i will add 10 and press command s and now you can see the view moves up a little similarly let's set the left and the right margin as well so we are going to select 5 and also right equal to 5 and after that select the bottom margin to 15 and press command s and that's it so now you can see our application is looking much better after adding these margins and at this point we have built the gui or a basic gui for the home screen of our scanner application and inside our next lecture we are going to start adding the code for choosing images inside our flutter application and after that we are going to perform text scanning text recognition and document enhancement on the images which user will gonna choose or capture so see you in the next lecture welcome to this lecture so now inside our application we have created a gui for our home screen and now we are going to start the process of choosing or capturing images so that later we can scan recognize and enhance them so how we are going to do that so inside our application we want that when the user will gonna click on this image icon we will show him the images of gallery and after that he can select any image that he likes and once he will gonna select it we are going to process that image which means that we are either going to scan it recognize it or enhance it and it will gonna depend based upon the selection of user but for now inside this lecture we are going to add the process of choosing images inside our flutter application and to do that we are going to use a library called image picker so to add that library inside our flutter project open your browser and go to a site named pub.dev so type it pub.dev and press enter and it will gonna open this website for you and it is basically an official package repository for dot and flutter applications so you will gonna find all the libraries related to flutter and dot here and the library which we are looking is called image picker so type image picker and press enter and you will find these search results so let's minimize this simulator and now you can see the first result is this image picker library and the popularity score is 100 percent so this is the most popular library for choosing or capturing images inside our flutter application so just click on it and the documentation page of this library will be opened and here to install the library inside our application click on installing section and you will find this dependency here so you need to carefully copy this line and put it in the pubspec.yml file of our project so you can see this pubspec.yml here so just open it and now in the dependencies section below this icon dependency simply paste it after that click on this pub get and the library will be downloaded and added inside our flutter project and there you can see the library is downloaded and added inside our project and after adding the library open the documentation page so that we can read the instructions for using this library inside our application and here click on this read me section and you will find the instructions for using this library so here scroll down and you will firstly gonna see the instructions for ios so you need to follow these instructions to make this library work inside your ios application and then we got few instructions for android as well so let's firstly look at the instructions for ios so inside ios application we basically need to add some permissions inside our info.p list and by using these permissions or by using these tags we need to tell user that why our application want to access his pictures or why we want to access the camera and to add these permissions inside our info.plist file you can simply copy this ns photo library user description key and after that you can open our application and here expand this ios section and go to runner and there open our info.plist and inside it you can see these key string pair 
pairs. So we need to create a key string pair for each permission which we are seeking. So here I will gonna create a key tag and then add a closing tag as well. And now between these key tags paste the line or paste the word that we copied. So basically this key or word is indicating that we need to specify the reason that why our application want to access the photo library. So to specify the reason you are going to add a string tag here and then add a closing string tag as well. And now here between these string tags you need to specify the reason that why your application want to access the photos. And here you can write anything. Like you can write as we are building a document scanning application so we need to access your photos so that we can scan, recognize and enhance them. So it's up to you. And now we need to do the same for other permissions as well. So you can simply copy this key string pair and then paste it here and after that improve the spacing and then paste it one more time and that's it so now after pasting it we need to copy these keys as well so here copy this ns camera user description and after that paste it here and then copy the third one which is this microphone usage and then you can paste it here and here at this point we don't need to add these two key string pairs but in future when we are going to capture the images then we need it so that's why I have added them right now. So now here inside our info.plist file we have specified the key string pairs for three permissions. The first one is accessing the photo library, the second one is accessing camera and the third one is accessing microphone which is used with camera. And after doing that the setup for iOS is completed. And now let's look at the instructions for Android. So here you can read the details and you will find that no configuration required for Android. Which means that we don't need to follow any additional step to use this library inside Android. Hello guys Hamza here. I just want to let you know that this video is just first part of my complete build a document scanning application in Flutter course. The complete course is about 5 hours long and it includes all source code that we write in this course. Every section has before and after source code so you can easily code along with me. Apart from that you will get a certificate upon completion which you can add to your resume. And the course comes with a 30 days money back guarantee. So if you are not satisfied just simply ask for a refund. So if you are interested I will put a link down below and I am offering a discount to first 100 students. Apart from that you can check our other Flutter machine learning courses as well. And now let's continue to the next lecture. So now after looking at the instructions for Android and iOS, it's time to look at the details that how we are going to use this library inside our Flutter application. And to do that scroll down and you will find this example section. And here we got the code which will gonna help us use this library inside our application. So to use this library inside our application we need to firstly create an image picker object. And after that using it we are going to launch the gallery or capture the image. So inside our application go to home screen and here above our build method add an init state method. So type init and you will see this option for init state so just add it. So this init state method is the first method which will be called once this home screen will be visible on screen. And inside it we are going to initialize our image picker. So to use that library for choosing images from gallery we need to create that image picker object. And to do that firstly declare an image picker object here so image picker and name it image picker. And after that inside our init state we are going to initialize it. So image picker and then call its constructor. 
and that's it so now when our screen will be visible our image picker will be ready and now we can use this image picker for launching the gallery so that user can choose an image we are going to write the code for this icon so it means that in the own tab method for this icon we are going to write the code so expand this code widget and go to this third ink well which is representing this image and now inside this own tab we are going to use that image picker and we are going to call its method which is this pick image and now inside this pick image you need to specify the source that from which source you want to pick the image like if you want to capture the image using camera then specify the image source to camera and if you want to pick images from gallery then you need to specify the image source dot gallery here so you can see this camera and gallery option so select gallery and add a semicolon and that's it so now when this line will be executed you will gonna notice that the device gallery appeared here and then you can select any image but once user will gonna select the image we need to get that image inside our application so that we can scan recognize and enhance it so to get that image we can create an x file object here because this pick image will gonna return our image in the form of x file and then you can name it x file and assign the result to it and here you can notice the errors and the reason is this thing will be nullable so we need to add a question mark and after that once this pick image method will be executed we need to wait inside our application until user have selected the image so you need to add an await keyword here and when you will add this await keyword you need to make this method asynchronous so it means that this method will be executed asynchronously so now inside our application we have added this code and when the user will gonna click on this icon we are going to show the gallery and he can select the image and once he will gonna select the image we are going to get that image in the form of this x file variable and to test the behavior of our application at this point you can simply click on this top main dot dot and then install the application again inside your android and ios device and the reason is we have added a new library and we need to install the application again to make these changes take place so let's install the application again so now our application is installed inside the simulator so let's click on this image icon and there you can see when I click on it, it is asking that our application would like to access your photos. So you can give this permission. And after that, you can see the simulator gallery. And similarly, if you are running it on Android, you will gonna see the Android gallery here. And here you can select any image that you like. Like for example, I will gonna select this image. And after that, our application opened again. So now at this point, we got that selected image in the form of this x file object but we are not displaying that image anywhere inside our application but we are going to display it inside a separate screen inside our next lecture but for now we have used this image picker library in flutter for choosing images from gallery and similarly if you want to capture images using camera inside your application then change this gallery with camera and that's it and after that when you are going to run your application and click on it it will gonna launch the camera for you and as the camera functionality is not available on iphone simulator so i cannot test it here but if you are running the application on an android emulator or on an android device then you can test that thing as well but for now let's change back it to gallery and that's it welcome to this lecture so now inside our application we are using image picker library for choosing images from gallery and once user is selecting the image we are getting that image in the form of this x file object but now inside our application we want to display that image and we are going to display that image inside another screen so basically once user have selected the image we either want to scan it recognize it or enhance it so starting from this lecture we are going to work on text recognition inside our application so it means that once user will gonna select the image we are going to pass that image to our text recognition screen and there 
firstly we are going to display the image and then we are going to recognize the text present in that image so how we are going to do this so in order to do that we are going to create a new screen inside our application so click on this lib folder and then press ctrl click after that go to new dot file and name it recognizer screen after that press enter and this new dot file is created and now here again we are going to add a stateful widget and we are going to name it recognizer screen and after that we need to add the import so click on the stateful widget and press alt enter and then import this library so now you can see the errors are gone so now inside this recognizer screen we are going to take the image which user have selected or captured and then we are going to recognize the text present inside it so inside this recognizer screen we are going to take a parameter of type file and that file object will be containing our image in a file format so create this file object and name it image and after that we need to import the library in which this file is present and the library is dot dot io so just import it and the error is gone and after adding the parameter here we need to specify it in the constructor so from this constructor remove this const because it will not be constant and it will be taking a parameter and the parameter which it is taking is this image object so type this dot image and that's it so now this recognizer screen is taking this image as a parameter and inside this recognizer screen we only got this placeholder but we are going to display this image in the GU UI of this recognizer screen and we are going to do it in a minute but for now inside our home screen once user have selected the image we are going to move to our recognizer screen and pass that image to that particular screen and to do that firstly we are going to check that if this x file is not null because it can be null so if it is not null so in that case we are going to convert this x file into a file and then we are going to pass that file object to our recognizer screen so to convert this x file into a file you can create a file object here and name it image and after that you can call the constructor of this file and inside this constructor you need to pass the path of the file so we are going to use this x file dot path and it will gonna return its path and after doing this add a semicolon and then import this dot dot io here and that's it so now here if this x file is not null which means that user have selected any image then we are converting it into this file and after that we are going to move to our recognizer screen and to move to this screen we are going to use our navigator class so navigator dot push and then inside it you need to specify the route so basically inside the route object you need to specify the screen where you want to navigate so to specify the route you are going to use this material page route and inside it we are going to specify the builder so this builder is taking a context as a parameter and then add the curly braces for the body of this builder and then inside these braces you need to specify or return the screen where you want to navigate so return and our screen name is recognizer so you can see this option here so just select it and here we need to pass our image in a file format so as our image is already named as image so it is already passed so add a semicolon here and here and that's it so now here inside this own tab once user have selected the image we are checking the image is not null and then we are passing that image to our recognizer screen so at this point just simply format our code and after that we are going to click on this run made dot dot so that we can test these changes so now our application is opened again so click on this icon and select any image like i am going to select this particular image 
and there you can see as soon as I selected the image we are navigated to this recognizer screen and as that recognizer screen is displaying this placeholder so this view is visible but now we are going to create the GUI for this recognizer screen and in the GUI firstly we are going to display this image which user have selected so to create the GUI we are going to replace this placeholder with a scaffold so scaffold is a widget in flutter which provides you a basic layout of a screen so if you have seen any application screen you can notice that there is an app bar on the top and then below that app bar there is the body of the screen or other content so by using this scaffold we can add an app bar by setting this app bar property so when you will type app bar you will see this option so just add it and after doing that press command s and now you can see the GUI changed and we got that back button here and this back button is present inside this app bar and after this app bar you can also set the body property and here you can specify any widget like for now I will gonna add a container and after that set the color for this app bar so here in the app bar choose the background color property and set the color equal to blue accent and then press command s and now you can see inside our application we got this app bar with blue color and then below that we got the body which contain this container and in this app bar by default we got this back button and upon clicking on it we are navigating to the previous screen so that is the advantage of this scaffold so let's move back to the screen so I will gonna select this image and now we are again inside our recognizer screen and here in the app bar you can also show a title so by setting this title property and then select the text widget and here we are going to show the text recognizer after that press command s and now you can see our text is visible here and here you can also change the color of this icon and this text as well but we are going to do that later but now in the GUI of our recognizer screen we have added the app bar and the body and now in the body we are going to display the image which user have selected and to do that select the child property and then to display the image we are going to use this image dot file function and this is used to display an image from a file object and here we need to specify this image file and to access it you are going to use this dot widget dot and then you can access this file object so just select it and that's it so now press command s and there you can see our selected image is visible inside our recognizer screen similarly try it for some other image like I am going to select this image for now and you can see our image is visible so now we are showing the selected image inside our recognizer screen and after displaying the image here we need to pass it to our text recognition model and recognize all the text present in those document images and we are going to do that thing inside our next lecture. So now inside our application we are displaying the image which user have selected from gallery and right now we are displaying it inside our recognizer screen dot dot and inside this screen after displaying the image we need to recognize the text present inside this image so how we are going to do this so in order to recognize the text or perform text recognition inside our flutter application we are going to use the text recognition models of google mlkit library and to look at the details of this library open your browser and go to google and there type mlk text recognition press enter and you will see these results so click on this link text recognition v2 mlk and it will gonna open the documentation page for this feature so there you can see the documentation page is opened and here we can read about the features of text recognition provided by Google MLKit and later we are going to use it inside our Flutter application. So the MLKit text recognition API can recognize text in any Chinese, Japanese, Korean and Latin character set.
The API can also be used to automate data entry tasks such as processing credit cards, receipts and business cards. And below we got few key capabilities of this library. And the first one is by using this library we can recognize the text in, in these particular languages. And below you can read about the key capabilities of this library. And the first one is recognizing text across various scripts and languages. And after that apart from recognizing text you can also analyze the structure of text. So what does that mean? So it means that using this library you cannot just simply recognize the text present in the image. But the library will also going to categorize the text into blocks, lines, words and characters. And we will cover the detail in just a second. And now the third key feature is identifying the language of the text. So it means that apart from recognizing the text, it can also detect the language of that text. And then we got this real time recognition. So by using it, we can recognize text in real time using the live camera footage. So now after looking at these key features, let's understand this text structure. So when we use this library for recognizing the text, it will gonna recognize the text in the form of blocks, lines, elements and symbols. And here the blocks are similar to the paragraphs in real world. And the line is similar to a simple line of text. And the element is representing an individual word of our text. And this symbol is representing an individual character. And for each block, line, element and a symbol, the library will also going to return the location that where in the image or in the document, the block, line, element and the symbols appear. Like here you can see when we pass this image to our text recognition model, it detected this block, these lines and these elements. And it also returned their location using which a rectangle is being drawn around them. And now let's see an example here. So this is the image which was passed to the model. And the response from the model was similar to this one. So firstly it returned the simple text present in the document which is this one. Although it is not in the English language so I cannot read it. But it is the same text appeared here. So now after getting the plain text it returned the blocks present in that image. So as there is only one block so it returned that information that the block contained this information. And after that it returned the location for that block and then the corner points and after that we got the recognized language which is DE and it is actually a language code and then we got the number of lines present in that block and after that for each of these lines we got the same information. So for line 0 the text is this one and then we got the location corner point recognized language confidence score rotation degree and the elements. So here the confidence score is indicating that how much our model is sure that this text is appeared in the first line. And after that the element is indicating the number of words present in the first line. So there you can see there are two words there. And now for each of the word we are getting the same information. So in short when we use this library for recognizing text we are not just only getting the text present in the document but we are getting a lot of other information which can be used for variety of use cases. And now we are going to use this text recognition model of Google MLKit library inside our Flutter application. Hello guys, Hamza here. I just want to let you know that this video is just first part of my complete build a document scanning application in Flutter course. The complete course is about 5 hours long and it includes all source code that we write in this course. Every section has before and after source code so you can easily code along with me. Apart from that you will get a certificate upon completion which you can add to your resume. And the course comes with a 30 days money back guarantee. So if you are not satisfied just simply ask for a refund. 
So if you are interested I will put a link down below and I am offering a discount to first 100 students apart from that you can check our other flutter machine learning courses as well and now let's continue to the next lecture so now we are going to use the text recognition models of Google ML Kit library inside our Flutter application. And to do that, you need to open pub.dev. So there you can see we have opened the documentation page for this image picker. But now we are looking for a different package. So here in the search bar, type ML Kit text recognition and press enter. So there you can see the search result and here the first one is Google ML Kit text recognition. So just click on it and the documentation page will be opened. And here click on this installing button. And now copy the dependency which we need to add inside our application. After that open our project and go to pubspec.yml. And here below this image picker paste the line then click on this pub get so that the library will be downloaded and added inside our project. And there you can see the library is downloaded and added inside our project. And after adding the library, go to readme section where we are going to read the instructions for using this library. So here when you will scroll down, you will gonna find this iOS and Android section. So firstly, let's look at the instructions for Android. So to use this library inside Android, you need to set the minimum SDK version to 21 and our target and compile SDK versions should be 33. And to do that, open our application and here expand this Android section then go to app and here open our build.gradle file. So now scroll down and you will find the min SDK version here. So you can see this min SDK version and you can manually specify it to 21. After that you can find the target SDK version so set it to 33 and also the compile SDK version so you can find this version here and set it to 33 and that's it. So now after setting them the setup for Android is completed and at this point you can simply install the application inside Android and our application will gonna work fine. And now let's look at the instructions for iOS. So for iOS we need to make sure all of these points are met and here the first one is our minimum iOS deployment target should be 12 so we are inside our application we can set it so to check these properties open our application and then right click on iOS or press control click then here go to flutter and select this open iOS module in Xcode so now the iOS module is opened inside Xcode and here to make sure that our minimum iOS deployment target should be 12 or greater click on runner and you will find this minimum deployment section and here you can see 12 is selected so you need to make sure that this is not less than 12 but you can select greater than 12 here after that click on runner test and make sure that it is 12 here as well then click runner and here you can also make sure and then go to pods and here click on this pods and, and check it is 12 or not and then for all the libraries you need to do it like for this image picker iOS go to general and you will find 12 here and then you can also verify it here here so in short you need to make sure that your minimum deployment target should not be less than 12 and then look at the next instruction so our Xcode version should be 13.2.1 or newer so open Xcode and here go to about Xcode and you can see I am using 14.2 so this requirement is already met and then our Swift version should be 5 so to check your Swift version simply open the terminal and here you can write this command xc run Swift version so press enter and now you can see my Swift version is 5.7.2 so it means that this requirement is also met after that the fourth step is checking the architecture of our device so it should be 64 bit because 32 bit is not supported and here it is 
providing you a list where you can check your device and see whether it supports 64 bit or 32 bit. And after looking at these requirements, there is one final step and that is we need to go to project runner and building settings. And there we need to set this excluded architecture to ARMv7. So to fulfill this requirement, open Xcode and here go to runner. After that, go to build settings and here you need to set that excluded architecture so you can see it here. So I will gonna expand it and now we need to set it to ARMv7 and we are going to do it for debug profile and release. So click on this plus button and then set the value ARMv7 and then you need to do the same for this profile. So set it to ARMv7. And finally for this release. And that's it. So now after doing all of these things, the setup for iOS is completed as well. And to confirm that the library is successfully added inside our project, you can simply open our project and click on this top main dot dot. And after that, install the application again inside the simulator. So let's install it and see whether the library is successfully added or not. So now our application is installed inside the simulator so it means that we have set up the library successfully for iOS. Similarly we can also install it for Android and confirm this thing. So now after setting up the library for both Android and iOS, it's time to use that library inside our application. And to do that, open the documentation page and here scroll down. And now you will see this section about usage. And here you will find these instructions. So by default, this package only supports recognition of Latin characters. So if you need to recognize other languages, you need to add manual dependencies. So it means that for Latin languages, we don't need to do any extra step. But if you want to recognize Chinese, Japanese, Korean and this language, then you need to manually specify this part for iOS and these dependencies for Android and we will also cover them later. But for now, as we are going to recognize English or Latin language, so we don't need to do any extra step and we are going to proceed in using this library. So to use this library, we need to create an object of type text recognizer. And then to that text recognizer, we are going to pass our image and that text recognizer will gonna recognize the text and return the result. So to do that, you need to copy this line where we are creating this text recognizer object. After that, open our application and go to recognizer screen. And here above our build method, we are going to add that init state method. So type init and you will see this option. So just add the method and now inside it, simply paste the line that we copied and then add the import. So you can see import library, Google ML kit text recognition and upon importing it, the error is gone. So now here inside init state, we are initializing our text recognizer, but we need to declare this text recognizer outside of this init state so that we can access it outside of this init state method. So just simply copy this text recognizer and then remove this final from here. And after that above this init state, we are going to declare a variable of type text recognizer. After that, paste the name here and then add a late keyword. And that's it. So now we are declaring our text recognizer here and we are initializing it inside our init state. And while initializing it, we are specifying the script to Latin. So now after creating our text recognizer, we need to pass our image to this text recognizer and get the recognized text. So as you can see, we got our image in a file format. So we need to pass this image file to this text recognizer. And to do that, open the documentation page and here you will find this first cell which is about this input image. So in order to pass an input image to our text recognition model, we need to convert it into a format called
called input image and then we can pass that input image to our text recognizer dot process image method so now the next step is converting our file object into this input image and to do that you will gonna find the instructions present on this link so just simply open it and there you will find the instructions to create input image object from different formats like if you got the path of the image file then you can convert it into input image using this from file path function and if you got the file object then you can use this from file function and if you got the bytes of your image then you can use this from bytes function and then we got the other instructions as well but right now we got our image in a file format so we we can use this input image dot from file function and now inside our application we are going to use it so after this init state we are going to call a method do text recognition and we are going to create this method in just a minute so do text recognition and then we are going to create this method below this init state so do text recognition and inside this method we are firstly going to convert this image into input image and to do that we are going to create an input image object here so input image and name it input image and after that we are going to use this input image dot from file function and inside this function we are going to specify this image file so to access it we are going to use this dot widget dot image and after that add a semicolon and that's it so now when this line will be executed our image will be converted into this input image format and now we can pass this input image to our text recognition model and now we can pass this input image to our text recognition model and to do that you will gonna find the instructions on the documentation page so there you can see this section process image so you can write this code by yourself or you can simply copy it like here let's copy the code and put it inside our application so inside this do text recognition I am going to paste it and now let's look at the code which we pasted here so there you can see firstly we got this error because there is an await keyword so we need to make this method asynchronous and now the error is gone and secondly there is this error for this point class and this error will be gone once we will import this library dot html and that's it so now you can see all the errors are gone and now we can see the code which we pasted so basically here we are using this text recognizer and calling its process image method and inside it we are passing this input image object so this method will gonna pass our image to the text recognition model and then it will gonna return the result in the form of this recognized text object and then using this recognized text object we can get the recognized text and we can also get the text in the form of blocks lines elements and symbols so firstly in order to get the text which is present inside the document you can use this recognized text dot text property and it will gonna recognize that text in the form of string and after that to get the text in the form of blocks lines and words you can use this recognize text dot blocks list and we are going to cover this for loop in just a minute but for now to confirm the working of our application let's simply print the text in the console to see whether our application is successfully recognizing the text or not so in the print function I am going to print the value of this text variable so now here at this point if we will try to run the application we are going to get an error and the reason is we have imported a wrong library so we don't need to import this dot html but instead we are going to import dot dot math for this point so click on point and then import this dot dot math and that's it so now here at this point we can simply run the application and check the recognition results in the console because we are printing the value here so click on this run main dot dot and our application will be hot reloaded so now our application is opened again so let's choose an image from gallery like I am going to select this image and now you can see our image is visible here 
but as you can see we have printed the recognition results in the console so when you will gonna expand this run section you are going to see the recognition results here so you can see the results life in a big city a big city comes with a wide range of facilities that make your life convenient and similarly we can see all the text which our model thought present in the picture similarly let's test it for other document image like i am going to select this particular image which contains a lot of text and now you can see it detected almost each and everything which is present inside this sample essay so now inside our application we are successfully using text recognition model and recognizing the text and for now we are simply printing the text in the console but inside our next lecture we are going to show that text inside our application GUI so that we can clearly see it and then easily copy it Welcome to this lecture. So now inside our application we are performing text recognition and we are displaying the results in the console. So there you can see the recognized text is being displayed here. And now we are going to display that recognized text on this screen. So below this image we are going to show that recognized text. And to do that we are going to make changes inside our recognizer screen dot dot. So there you can see the build method and inside it we simply got a container which is showing this image but now below this image we are going to display the text result and to do that we need to enclose this widget inside a column widget and then in that column widget firstly the image will be displayed and below that the recognition will be displayed so click on image and press alt plus enter then select wrap with column and now below this image widget we are going to add a text widget where we are going to to display the result so here in the text widget we are going to display the results returned by our text recognition model and the results returned by the model are stored inside this text variable so to show this text in the GUI let's create a variable and name it result so string results and for now it will gonna store the empty string and after that inside our do text recognition when we are passing the image to our text recognition model and getting this recognized text we are going to assign the result to this results variable so results and assign the result here and after that we are going to print the result here and then we are going to add this result inside a set state block so that wherever this variable is being used the changes will apply and we are going to use this result variable here inside this text widget and that's it so now after making this change simply click on this run main dot dot and now our application is refreshed so here select the same image so I will gonna select it and there you can see once I selected it then below the image we got the recognition result and there you can notice the overflow error and the reason is the text is exceeding the height of the device so to tackle this error you can enclose this container inside a single child scroll view and it will gonna make our screen scrollable so click on this container and press alt plus enter then select wrap with widget and here search for single child I'll scroll view so just select it and after that press command s and now you can see the error is gone so you can scroll and see the recognition result and you will gonna notice that it has returned quite accurate results and now we are going to improve the visibility of these results so that they will gonna look better and to do that let's firstly enclose this text widget inside a card widget so click on it and then press alt plus enter and after that select card here and then press command s and now you can see the background color is changed because now the text is being displayed in this card widget and after doing that we are going to add a header to this view and to do that we are going to enclose this text widget inside a column so select wrap with column and after that in this column firstly we are going to display a container and then in that container we are going to add a row widget and then inside this row widget we are going to add 
add the text widget and the icon. So basically we are going to add a header here and in that header we will gonna display the heading result and we are also going to show the copy button. So to do that firstly inside this row widget we are going to add the text widget so text and then we are going to display the text results here. And after that we are going to add an icon widget here and here we are going to display a copy icon so icons dot copy and you can see these copy icons so I will gonna select this one and after that add a comma after this container and this error will be gone now press command s and you can see the text results and this icon here. So now we are going to change the background color of this container. So here select the color property and we are going to choose the same color which is this blue accent. And after that press command S again. And now you can see the background is changed. And then we are going to beautify this result and this icon. So firstly we are going to change the color of the icon so color and color will be the white color so just select it and after that we are also going to increase the size of this text and the color to white so set the style property for this text widget and choose text style here and then inside it we are going to set the color so color will be colors dot white and after that we are going to select the font size and the size will be 17 or you can also choose 18 and after doing that press command s and now you can see the size is increased and the color is changed and now we need to add some spacing between this container and this text and icon so to do that you can wrap this row in, with a padding widget so here you can see this wrap with padding so just select it and a padding of 8 will be added on all sides so press command s and now you can see it is looking much better And to do that you can set the main axis alignment for our row so you can select main axis alignment dot space between and after that press command s and now you can see both of them are separated and similarly if you want to display this reserve text in the middle then one way is to put another icon above or to the left of this result text so here what you can do is to copy this icon related code and then paste it above and after that we are going to display a random icon here or you can also display the text recognition icon so here i will gonna search for scanner and you can see the same document scanner icon which we use to indicate text recognition and after doing that press command s and now you can see this bar is looking much better and here we need to make this copy icon functional so that when the user will gonna click on it we are going to copy this recognition result in the clipboard and we are going to do that in just a minute but for now you can notice that there is a very small gap between this box and this image so here we can also set the margins for our card widget so inside card widget search for margin and then set a margin on all sides so edge insets dot all and then we are going to add a margin of 10 on all sides after that press command s and now you can see the margin is added and now this view is looking much better similarly if you want you can change the color of the card so that this thing will be obvious and to do that after this margin you can select the color property and then we can select the gray color and after that you can choose any shade of gray color like i will gonna select this shade 300 and press command s and now you can see the color is added and our text is more visible similarly here you can also increase the size of the text so that it will be more obvious so you can set the style property for our text widget which is displaying the text so here text style and then inside it we are going to set the font size and we can select the size to 18 then press command s 
and you can see the size of text is increased and it is much more readable now so now inside our application when the user will gonna select any image we are going to pass it to our text recognition model and show the results here and here user can also copy the results by clicking on this icon so now we need to do that part hello guys hamza here i just want to let you know that this video is just first part of my complete build a document scanning application in flutter course the complete course is about 5 hours long and it includes all source code that we write in this course every section has before and after source code so you can easily code along with me Apart from that you will get a certificate upon completion which you can add to your resume and the course comes with a 30 days money back guarantee so if you are not satisfied just simply ask for a refund so if you are interested i will put a link down below and i am offering a discount to first 100 students apart from that you can check our other flutter machine learning courses as well and now let's continue to the next lecture